Hello there everybody, Bonna here, and in this video we're going to be discussing the crafting skill attribute. Perhaps you've always wondered what crafting skill does, or maybe you know what it does, but you don't know the full details behind it, or exactly how you should be taking advantage of it. Well in this short video we're going to be exploring these talking points and discuss exactly how you should be using this attribute to your fullest advantage. If you find this video enjoyable or helpful, then please be sure to leave it a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more stupid content just like this. So, let's first talk about what crafting skill is so we know what we're dealing with. Crafting skill directly impacts your character's crafting speed of items inside of your inventory. Think of things like arrows, bullas, the lower tiers of structures, or BDSM items. The higher your character's crafting skill, the greater the speed of crafting items will be. It does not affect the crafting speed of items inside of other inventories though, such as narcotics, simple rifle ammo, or polymer. While this is cool and certainly helpful when creating a large amount of items at once, I find this aspect of the attribute to be rather lackluster, especially in the endgame. Now I know what you're thinking, but Bona, so far crafting skill sounds about as useful as a spatula in a sword fight. I'll cut your gizzard out. Well you see, dear viewer, the crafting skill attribute really begins to shine when you look at its other major aspect, crafting bonus. You see, on top of boosting your crafting speed of items, crafting skill also boosts your crafting bonus of items. This bonus is applied to every stat of the given item, including armor values, durability, insulation stats, and weapon damage. Now, this crafting bonus doesn't have an effect on regular engrams, but it does affect custom food recipes, and more importantly, blueprints. As an example, check out these two custom food recipes so you can see the difference for yourself. Each recipe used the same exact ingredient, but the one on the left was created with no crafting skill, while the one on the right was created with high crafting skill. The Artificial Wiki page has an incredibly useful custom consumable calculator that can help you choose the best ingredients for your food recipe. It even calculates the stats beforehand based on your character's crafting skill. I'll put a link in the description down below for easier access. Crafting blueprints with a high amount of crafting skill can yield some incredible results, giving you access to saddles, armors, and weapons with stats that you might otherwise never be able to acquire. For example, take a look at the difference between these two items so you can see the difference for yourself. Both items were crafted from the same exact blueprint, but the one on the left was created with no crafting skill, while the one on the right was created with high crafting skill. As a quick side tip, it's in your best interest to stockpile on the necessary resources beforehand, as you may want to craft the blueprint multiple times in order to get the best possible outcome. And that, my dear viewers, is a perfect segue straight into the next topic. You see, there are a few catches with how crafting bonus works, the main one being the dreaded RNG. You see, the actual crafting bonus you get on an item is completely random. Increasing your crafting skill doesn't increase your chances of crafting an item with a higher bonus, but rather just increases the top end that can be achieved. As you can see from this example, I crafted four swords from the same blueprint and ended up with some highly variable results. The crafting bonus of these items ranged all the way from 6.2% all the way up to 41.5%. The exact formula for figuring out your crafting bonus potential is your character's crafting skill divided by 20. So for example, say you invest 5 attribute points into the crafting skill to raise it up to 50%. This would result in a plus 2.5% crafting bonus potential. Conversely, if you invested 50 attribute points into the crafting skill, it would raise it up to 500% and result in a plus 25% crafting bonus potential. Notice how I'm placing emphasis on the word potential. As aforementioned, your chances of hitting the max crafting bonus remains unchanged, but increasing the top end can result in some incredibly powerful items. Not to mention, increasing the range of the bonus's potential means that a higher end craft with high crafting skill is most definitely going to be a good item, whereas a higher end craft with low crafting skill won't be, as the potential range is significantly smaller. Now if we take a look at the item's crafting bonus in relation to its stats, you might recognize that the numbers don't really seem to work out. After all, if we multiply this crafting bonus percentage to the blueprint stats, shouldn't we be looking at an item with these numbers? Well, no, because Wildcard likes to make things confusing just to f with you. The crafting bonus you achieve on an item only affects the bonus stats applied to that item via the blueprint in relation to its base stats. For example, if you have a bow blueprint with 200% damage, this means that that blueprint is providing a bonus of 100% more damage when compared to the primitive engram. The crafting bonus we achieve will only affect the additional 100% damage, not the total damage of 200%. So let's say we get a crafting bonus of 40% on this item. We would get 40% of the 100% that the blueprint is providing added onto the total damage of the blueprint, in this case resulting in a bow with 240% extra damage. As a little side note, consuming focal chili will temporarily increase your crafting speed even further by plus 100%, but this additional boost to your crafting bonus will only affect custom food recipes and does not have an effect on blueprints. So with all this information in mind, you might be wondering what is the best way to take advantage of this? 
After all, it's not exactly practical to run around with maxed crafting skill and no other stats in a game that tries to kill you around every corner. Well, I know that some of the more dedicated players have simply purchased another copy of the game and taken the time to level up an entirely separate character on a server they're playing on that can act as a dedicated crafter. Anytime they need to make food recipes or blueprints, they can simply log on to that character, craft the necessary items, and switch back to their main. Personally, I think this is far too clunky, time-consuming, and costly. Ain't nobody got time for that! Instead, I would recommend using a Mind Wipe tonic to reset your character's attribute points and fully invest into the crafting skill. Once you're done crafting all your desired items, simply Mind Wipe again to reset all of your stats and engrams to the way they were before. Please keep in mind that Mind Wipe tonics have a real-time 24-hour cooldown between uses, so plan your crafts ahead of time that way you're not stuck with a terribly built character for too long. Some servers have this real-time cooldown disabled and allow you to instantly respect between Mind Wipes, so be sure to check your server settings to see if this option is enabled. And that about wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave it a like down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on to stay up to date on all of my latest content, join the Discord for a community of like-minded woodland creatures, and please keep leaving me comments because they warm my little bunna heart. A special thank you goes out to all of the bunnas who support me on Patreon, you guys are amazing! Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.